Monitoring, is it? Oh, it's already recording. Good. Good. Someone just flipped it on. You can sit there. I mean, I'm ready. I am. through September 2018. Uh, we had 16 OCLC members, libraries participate. Um, the objective was to create a framework for reconciling, creating, and managing bibliographic and authority data as linked data entities and relationships. Again, it was on creating, not just converting legacy data into linked data. But we did first feed our Wikibase instance with 1.2 million entities, mostly data representing the overlaps between Wikidata, 
the BF and WorldCat. So everything in Wikidata is entity-based, which allowed us to create linked data without needing to learn its technical underpinnings. And that was really crucial for all of us. Um, so we could focus on making statements and claims without needing to understand or know the technical underpinnings of linked data like triple stores, RDF, and the like. For Xiaoli and me, we could also just focus on exploring the multilingual support. So I'm now going to hand off to Xiaoli for context setting and her experiences with creating entities in Chinese. Xiaoli. Thank you, Karen. Um, so we participate in the OCLC project and with the understanding of what get our hands on to see what is creating linked data really means to a cataloger. But before I really talk about our experience, I think one of the things uh, I want to think about and talk about is when you come to a library conference and I wouldn't let you go home without seeing what the mark record looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to see the mark record first before I talk about it. Um, so the, I'm native Chinese speaker, so definitely when I look at the cataloging issues or uh, challenges, I tend to look at the language I'm familiar with. So I'm going to use this example to demonstrate some of, I consider this challenge and also its pain points uh, using current sort of cataloging practices. So this one is a title page of a very Chinese famous, um, famous novel. Uh, it's pronounced <coughs> Hong Long Mong. I don't know how many of you know it. It's, it's too famous, I feel like everybody should know, I just do it. Uh, so, this title page, the biggest three letter on the left side is a title. And then the smaller fund and the two of them together, those are the co-authors. So currently in our cataloging environment, in the MARC format, how are we dealing with this? So for, for the authors, I circled in the red because that one is more famous than the other one. Um, so this author currently, even though is in Chinese native scripts, but in our cataloging practice, we transliterate his name into a Romanized form, and then we provide the native scripts as sort of C reference. Uh, this information is primarily for catalog to differentiate when there's a similar or same romanization. How are we dealing with bibliographic record? So in the bibliographic record, we follow the same practice. We use transliteration form as a primary access point. And then um, if catalog opt to do it, they can provide the native scripts. And those two things are linked together. So uh, in this is this is OCLC um, connection display, but in many libraries, you use 80 mark fields, basically related to those primary link fields. And so the other thing I've been thinking about is, okay, using transliteration form has the purpose, because for many non-native speakers, when they see those form, then know how to pronounce it, which makes it more uh, easier for library internal operation. For example, circulation, or collection, um, management, or even your check-in uh, staff. So make it relatively easier. But there's also a challenge of using uh, transliteration form. For example, I'm going to use two authors that happen to be, looks like in the romanized form of the name, it's almost look, uh, it's the same. But when you the, do have a different native script, so in our current practice, if you only have the romanized form, then it's identical. There's no way to differentiate it. So the way we have been differentiated is, in addition to that, they're born in the same year. So then we have to find another element to make separate them. So that's why we add the, the January as the, the, the other author's um, birthday. But when you look at the scripts, 
the native script, they are actually not the same. I mean, just back to one thing to think about if Karen talked about at the last session is if you are thinking about the you presenting the information in the context of the patron preferred, then you actually don't need those additional information to differentiate them. They are two separate names and two separate entities, but current practice makes them same. So one challenge is this. The other challenge is we talked about data reuse and data sharing, but when you have a different cataloging, especially transliteration rules, make it harder to share. So I'm going to use the same author. In Chinese, again, it's the same person, but this is how we set up his name authority strengths for this person in <coughs> English. And next one is how French handle it. If I got those flag right. <laughs> Somebody says, e e uh, e this is from the VF, which was discussed uh, at last session. It does have some, uh, not really language, but tell you where it comes from. So who can guess where this comes from? Estonia. Very good. How about this one? I'm sorry? Yes, thank you. See, I have I have helper in the audience. And this one? Korea. So when you have the same answer translated into different forms, how do we share the data? and without cross uh, walk. So that truly made it difficult, <laughs> difficult. So now I think enough talking about pen. Um, the other thing, this probably primarily uh, appears in Chinese uh, cataloging uh, material. So we have transliteration rules, which is defined or maintained by the level of Congress. Uh, Library of Congress actually transliteration tables, there's 75 of them. For the languages that probably most possible appears in the publication. So Chinese is one of those transliteration tables, we call romanization table. Um, in Chinese, when you put the words together, we really don't have space to separate them. Um, but in the transliteration table, uh, and the guideline tells you sometimes certain things should go together, sometimes you put a space. Because of that, the rule become a, a little bit challenge for catalog to apply consistently. So I'm just going to give you one example to show. This is called um, Yangtze River um, Drainage Basin. It's a four Chinese character, but we have three different ways being represented in the catalog record in OCLC. Those are truly the OCLC records. But I'm only giving you the heading. So this, the one I have highlighted, not highlighted, underlined in the red, you see those four characters are being separated. But then we have some catalog put the first two together, because that means uh, Yangtze River. And then we have another uh, catalog that put the first two together and the last two together. So this definitely affects searching. And when Chinese catalog do the cataloging, very often they have to try different way, otherwise they may end up create duplicated records. OK, so now move to our experience with Wikidata. So I had two uh, catalogers uh, participating in the project passage and they primarily concentrate on Chinese material. Again, it's area I most want to know more in the field I'm more comfortable with. So one of the first thing we tried is we said, OK, uh, how do we do Chinese cataloging in the Wikidata uh, environment? So one of the thing, first thing we notice is we can put into Chinese character not only showing its Chinese language, but in what type of written style because the Chinese, at least the one, two of them are most often seen as classic Chinese and the simplified Chinese characters. So we can actually down to that granular level saying the character I'm putting in is simplified Chinese. And those characters uh, have a different unicode behind it. 
So when you have those granularity, make it easier for maybe later on machine re, uh, manipulation. And the next thing is, uh, I talked about how our current practice treating, treating the, the authors have the, the written style isn't in the Chinese, I mean in the English. So we have preferred the label for them is <coughs> romanized form. But so first thing we tried is, okay, we create a, a wiki, wiki item for this author. And we add some Chinese character and everything into it. Then what we found out is, if I, as a Chinese user, I want to see how the Chinese being displayed, I can just change um, the circle that English to Chinese. And this is how that the same record is displayed to me. So as a Chinese public author, this will be feeling more useful. It's the same identity, but displayed differently. So there's no preferred, no preferred label. So with this, I think a lot of information, because Wikidata supports multilingual um, features, you could get the same Wikidata item, but present them in a different way. So those are the same person, but the information drawn from a Wikidata displayed in a different language based on the user's preference. So with that, I'm going to transition to um, Karen, and I think I already used some of her time. Sorry. <laughs> But I know Mary Lee, she's going to let me talk. Um, I'm, for a little while, anyway. I would like to focus on the case studies we did on translations. Um, the cream of the world's cultural and knowledge is shared by being translated. It's how we learn about other cultures, and it's how other cultures learn about us. And WorldCat does contain many rich cataloging records for these translations. And our project passage participants had homework assignments to enter works and their translations into our Wikibase instance. So um, here is how we start our little t interactive test. Um, a key method of knowledge transfer. Only 7% of the unique authors in WorldCat have works that have been translated into uh, at least one other language. So I refer to this as a short head, as opposed to the long tail of works that have the most impact on readers worldwide. And I've listed here some, a few titles, some are classics, of course, some written by Nobel Prize laureates in literature. And now I want to see how many of you can read at least two of those titles. So we have a multilingual group here. Three. Do I see any three? Oh, look at that. Four. Do I hear four? Wow, five? Okay, four, the four is amazing, okay? Um, in fact, you probably all have heard, I mean, just probably you should have uh, recognized the one because Hung Lo Mong is the one that Xiaoli just showed you. <laughs> so you should have been able to read that one. Um, but in any case, you probably are familiar with at least the English names of these very famous titles. And, but that's the point. You probably have either read it or even watched a movie of some of these because they've been translated into our language, whatever it is. So this is the model we use for represent works and their associated translations. Um, this is the Martin Heidegger Sign and Zeit, um, first published in German in 1927, and various translations, all of them associated with the original week, original work with the relationship translation of work. And that's indicated by the red arrows. Now with these translations, some of them, there have been multiple translations into the same language. So they're differentiated by the translator. So in this example, we have two Korean translations. One was uh, by, uh, in Hangul only, and the other one with Hangul and Hanja, both by different translators in different publications years. Um, so altogether, we've identified in WorldCat 570 translations in 33 languages. So this is how we applied our model into the desired minimum set of statements for our project passage participants. 
the Wikibase statements for work and the Wikibase statements for translations, in which instance of was it translation, translators was highly recommended, and so forth. Um, now, I mentioned earlier that we did uh, bring in data from WorldCat, and you know, not all mark records are equally good. So here's one example of, let's say, a not so great mark record for a translation. No original language indicated, no original title. Um, and Chiotti is listed as the translator of the, into the Italian, but they weren't really an author, they were the translator. Here's a mark record for a later translation, but still Italian, and here it clearly indicates the original language as well as it's translated into Italian, the original title sign and site, and correctly identifies Chiotti as a translator. So this just doesn't, you don't have to have every record perfect, as long as there at least some of the records for a title are as good as this one, the gold standard, the gold star, then we can take that data and really import it into Wikidata and show those relationships. Unfortunately, not all of them are equally good. Uh, this is a visualization of all of the translations we had in Wikibase for Design Insight. Um, on a timeline, uh, it shows the language and the translators and the language. And I circled the four that were translated into Japanese and their translators. I would like to point out that a lot of the languages in WorldCat, non Latin languages, are Romanized only, do not have the characters. So here, the Greek and Persian ones, shown in scripts on the previous screen, were ingested from Wikidata. And in fact, um, going on just quickly, the discovery layer was very important in the project passage. Um, all of those translated from, the users couldn't see all the, the relationship inside the Wikibase editor, but the discovery layer shows not only the work, Zion and Zion, but all the work that was translated into by a Sparkle query that brought it out from the Wikibase. Plus, it also brought in information from DBpedia and Media Commons, so it reminds us that not all information needs to be in one place. We can bring it in from other data sources. So I'll just conclude by saying that we see mutual benefit between WorldCat and Book. Um, WorldCat and Wikidata, and in a late data information network, we can all benefit. That's it. Thank you. We're going to take about uh, take a couple minutes for questions, and then bring up our next um, set of speakers. So I think we've got some people uh, minding our mics. Tom and Gary. At least one person might have been in mic. So um, questions. Let's bring Jelly and Karen up so you can answer questions. We have them. Yes, Beth. So thinking about your examples and wondering about the, the, the other direction. So can you take the data that's in Wikibase, uh, Wikidata, and take it back to those mark records that are full so that we get the enrichment in both directions. Uh, certainly interoperability is one of the big issues with regardless of what story you started in. Um, I think, I, I, well, I have a personal opinion. I mean, anything's practical, I mean, anything's possible. Um, you have the data in Wikidata, you could do the old, this is what we used to do in the old days, you know, copy-paste. <laughs> I mean, literally, I mean, that's where you go. I mean, it is, you know, we, we're very well represented for Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and WorldCat. I mean, really, really well. But keep in mind, the first CJK script record was entered in Mark by the Library of Congress in 19... <coughs> We're talking about 20th century, yes. 1982. 82. That's 37 years ago. So 37 years, we have good representations for CJK. But in index scripts, like 1%, maybe. And it's similar for the Library of Congress catalog as well. I mean, we're very poorly represented for a number of other scripts. 
So where that data is in Wiki data, they'll be in the original, they'll, at least the representation will be in the original script. Maybe not the translation, but the name of the work would be. So I would, yes, if you have the opportunity, just add, go look at Wiki data, see if they have it, and copy paste at will. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, but sometimes, you know, the manual workaround, or you could wait another decade until somebody figures out a way of doing Are you a person? Oh, uh, not necessarily bad here, but um, I think one of the things to think about in data, hopefully, is we're not keeping the same data, multiple copy in multiple place. So finding the way to utilize it. Maybe I would suggest to you to take this topic to the birds of further discussing about the display because probably those data I'm, I'm sure will be useful, but probably you could just take it as a time you need it instead of keep it just in case. So maybe that's some scenario library can work as a community to figure out how to use the data, not make a copy. And I will say that's an excellent point. One of the things that really this experience taught me, we have this compulsion to try to bring everything together, you know, in one store. And when you look at how many other resources are out there with the same or similar resources, why? I mean, why not just use the, the potential of linked data to bring in other data when you need it? So it's, it's, it'll mean a mind shift because you know, we want the original scripts in our own catalog, but in a linked data environment, that's the way to, because nobody's going to do a recon project for the millions of index and other script records that are there for only romanization. I don't think. I doubt. I'll put it that way. One more question. Well, I'm coming, I will be coming out to convert 1,500 or so card catalog with the type transcription. That was in 1990 or so. And, and I did a paper on my transcript in maybe around. Um, so that, it's interesting that I'm part we have card, but we still have a lot of pages. So I just want to comment. Thank you for your, I hope participate.